Hi, welcome to the very first debate of the new Premier League season, of the new Premier League preview show season. And today, we are in the camp of Chelsea Football Club in West London. We are asking, can Timo Werner and Kai Havertz lead Chelsea to the title? Can Timo Werner and Kai Havertz lead Chelsea to the Premier League title? That's the question of the day. So let's hear from you. I will throw it to the two combatants in the studio. Let's start off with Fenty Tahu, who is in his Chelsea shirt. So you can imagine the answers he'll be giving us this afternoon. <laughs> Cataclysmic and things. <laughs> nah, so, can Timo Werner and Kai have a snitch of How's Jorginho, though? Just before you, how is Jorginho? The Jorginho role. <laughs> how's all that gone? Don't worry. Now we will name that role the Ruby Loves to Chick role. Oh, crikey. If <laughs> Jorginho couldn't crack it, <laughs> we'll replace Jorginho. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm not worried. Uh, listen, man. Um, this is a very. You know, can they do it? Yes. Will they, they do it? Will they do it? It's, an, it's, another, it's another question. It's, a, it's, a, it's another realm of debate on its own. But if we are looking at it purely based on the qualities that they bring to this Chelsea team, um, we can only speak based on what those two have done. Because obviously, we cannot speak about what they will do. So, but based on what they have done, you can only assume that they can do the same thing in this particular Chelsea team. And what I'm going to start by saying is that let's look at Chelsea Football Club okay. from last season when they have played matches. They have shown that they are a team that are capable of coming up with some of the best results when you least expect them to. Okay. Like against Manchester City or against Liverpool or against Arsenal. They go and win at the Emirates. But when you expect them to win games like at home at, against Bournemouth, at home against West Ham United, teams that sit deep, that's when Chelsea are often found one thing. And that, in my opinion, has often been down to a lack of creativity in the final third. Okay. You look at Chelsea's team last season, and there was not a single, the only player that could provide any bit of creativity to that Chelsea team and really unlock defenses was Christian Pulisic. Okay. After the exit of Eden Hazard, Chelsea's creativity was limited by at least 50%. And they brought in a certain Christian Pulisic to try and solve that problem, and he was never fit. He only played about 60% of Chelsea's matches last season. Mm. So that meant that there was a huge gap in terms of creativity. There was no player available to unlock teams that often sat deep. And that, in my opinion, is where a player like Kai Havertz comes in. You look at uh, 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 the Chelsea midfielder, the youngster, Mason Mount. Yeah. He played 95% of Chelsea's matches last season. He did not create nearly as many as a player. He's not created nearly as many chances as a player like William. But he, at some moment in the game, was often Chelsea's farthest forward player apart from the striker. So if you have a number 10 in Mason Mount, who runs a lot, who runs around a lot, but doesn't create much and yet plays so close to the opposition box, you have a problem. Mm. Comparatively, you have a player like Kai Havertz coming in. And Kai Havertz led the Bundesliga in terms of chances created last season. Based on that particular num uh, those particular numbers and the qualities that he's bringing into the Premier League, if he can produce even 80% of that in the Premier League, you're looking at at least adding 25% to Chelsea's goals for this season. Okay. That is massive. If you look at the number of goals Chelsea scored last season, only three teams have scored Chelsea last season. Liverpool, Man City, and Leicester City. You look at the rest of the teams... As poor as Chelsea were, with Olivier Giroud and Mason Mount as their strikers, they outscored the rest of the Premier League teams. Without any creativity, you have a player like Kai Havertz in there, okay. who can score as many as 15 goals in a season, 16, 17 goals in a season, plus creating the most chances in a top league like the Bundesliga, and you have had the problem solved for Chelsea. Now, when he's creating those opportunities and finishing some of them, because in this current Chelsea squad, he is the highest scoring midfielder they've got. 
That's fact. He scored more goals than any Chelsea central midfielder that is available anywhere in this current squad. So that ability is there. He's coming to work under a manager that has the ability, well, the highest scoring Chelsea's midfielder highest. in the history of the Premier League. So it's part of the reason, and I've read that Kai Havertz actually waived a seven million bonus payment from uh, 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 Leverkusen in order to join Chelsea because he was so desperate to work under Frank Lampard because he sees himself a lot more in Frank Lampard. Okay. A high goal scoring midfielder. So I think the goals, the creativity that he brings will help Chelsea a massive lot. And then you look at Chelsea, goal scoring. You look at the chances that they created last season. I think Chelsea were fourth in terms of highest number of chances created last season. And yet their goal scoring was terrible. You look at Simo Werner. In the last two seasons in the Bundesliga, only one player has outscored him. Robert Lewandowski. Le Robert Lewandowski. So he brings those sorts of numbers into the Premier League. Even if he, if he can produce 80% of those numbers, you're looking at adding at least 20% to Chelsea's goals this season. 20% more to Chelsea's goals this season, and Chelsea could be winning the Premier League. And you're looking at how Chelsea have to win games. And this is where I think these two will be crucial, because these two are players that bring creativity and a combination of creativity and direct runs. You look at Timo Werner, he has the ability to play in multiple positions, whether it's through the center or out wide on the right. The same can be said of Kai Havertz, either through centrally or out on the right hand side, and he can always switch with a player like uh, Hakim Ziyech. And I'm not saying the two of them are going to do the work alone, but you're going to look at pieces of a puzzle coming together, Hakim Ziyech on the left hand side, Kai Havertz in the middle, Pulisic okay. on the left, Timo Werner up front. The, all of those three, all of those four players, in fact, can interchange. They can always okay. change position. And that multitude, multitudinal dimensions that Chelsea would provide, it's a recipe for confusing opposition defenders and unlocking teams that have sat deep. Those teams are the teams that have beaten Chelsea last season. Teams that have come into the game and have sat deep and have only relied on the odd goal to score. Okay. With no creativity, you can't unlock teams like that. With creativity, which Harvard brings, and lots of movement, which a player like even Ziyech brings, I think Chelsea will not be winning those matches, including their already temperament for winning big games. And that, for me, okay. is how Chelsea can win the Premier League. I'm not saying they will but win the Premier they, League. Okay, all right. Uh, and that's interesting points from Francis. I'll be getting to Ben in a bit. But let's uh, hear from Chelsea manager Frank Lampard. He talks about the fact that as for this season, it is it. He's trying to win the big one. He's trying to push his team to go as far and as close to winning the big one as possible. All right, Frank Lampard says, I did not come here to hand debuts to academy players. I came here to win. Ben, so... Can he win with Timo Werner and Kai Havertz? Lampard says he is here to win. Of course, this is not time for my try, Marco. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he of has, course. He has to win. But you see, first things first. Let's talk about goals, right? The context of goals and the nature of how Chelsea close out games. So I like it when Chelsea fans say things like, Timo Werner is prolific, nobody's has scored him, blah, 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 blah. But you see, a context of goals matter. Timo Werner could get a hat-trick in a game that Chelsea ends up drawing 3-3. Timo Werner could end up scoring a consolation brace in a game that Chelsea end up losing 4-2. Timo Werner could end up getting a lot of goals that are inconsequential <coughs> to team results. Okay. Now, do you want your expensive debut season striker to score goals to fill up the number sheets, or you want them to score important goals that will get you over the line. That's, that's the why they brought these two players. These two players Good. have that's, been scoring goals in Germany. That, that's what I'm saying, but are, there's, there's a context to the goals. There are players who scored a lot of goals, but their teams always finish middle of the pack. Good. So ask yourself that, what sort of goals are we going to give, or what kind of chances are we going to give Timo Werner to get the goals that he's been getting? And, and, don't, don't ever be mistaken. Anybody that scored 28 goals to go with, what, eight assists in a season is not only a proven goal scorer, but it's also an intelligent player. So I expect that they will come in with the sense that 
minimum worst case scenario, I, as Timo Werner, I can get like 10 goals. Because, again, put the goals in context. The Bundesliga versus the Premier League. Who are the top defenders in the Bundesliga? I, I strongly believe that a good number of the top level defenders in the Bundesliga are middle of the pack defenders in the Premier League. A guy like Matt Humo, still regarded as one of the best out there. A lot of the guys they Timo Werner was going up against were not necessarily considered elite. And so what I'm saying is that, yes, I'm not saying the Bundesliga is not a top quality league, but I'm saying that the Bundesliga is known for being a free scoring league. In the Premier League, you, you have to literally work for every goal you score. So I, it's safe for me to say that for every two goals you scored in the Bundesliga, you will score one in the Premier League for Timo Werner. So one, two, two Bundesliga goals for me equal one Premier League goal in terms of how it's going to be done. That's the first thing. So I expect them to be put through their paces by a lot of the defenders that they come up against. That's the first struggle. Second struggle for me is team chemistry, team culture. Listen, team culture and team chemistry is probably the most fragile aspect of winning that teams ignore the most. Roles, accepting roles, making sacrifices for your team to win. Now ask yourself this. Is Lampard going to hand immediate starts to Havertz and Timo Werner? If he is, I'm going to be sitting back as Macy Mount and as Tammy Abraham, and I'm going to ask myself, like, wait, what's going on here? I don't care the price tags these guys are coming with, but when you were transfer strapped and could not make signings, we were the guys delivering the goods for you. And Fenn said it himself. If you look at Chelsea's goal scoring record, they were only outscored by the elite teams in the league. In fact, the reason why Chelsea could not contest for a title or struggle to make it into the top four was because their defense was poor. They considered 54 goals. Now, those 54 goals rank in the bottom half of the league. Guess who also considered 54 goals? Brighton and Hove Albion. Okay. That, that's the category Chelsea ranked in as far as their defense was concerned. So as far as I am concerned, in fact, if you were doing a post-mortem going into this season, you could have done without the team of Werner and Chelsea would have still been fine if we are going by okay. pure so, analytics so, so you think that alone. What, it wasn't necessary? I mean, you always you always want to improve as a team. Yes. So that, that's definitely that. So I'm talk, first thing I talked about was context of goals. Second mm. thing I talked about chemistry. chemistry. And then, like I said, finally for me, it will come down to being able to make the jump from the league. I've heard people say things like, if you can do it here, you should be able to do it there. It's not true. It's not true. And again, you want to look at the history of strikers that have come to Chelsea in the past. Take a sample size of 10. Let's go through the Chelsea strikers of them off the top of our heads. And Mutu, actually, Sheva, Matea Kesman, Fernando Torres, Crespo, Fernando Torres, okay. Alvaro Morata. A lot of them have struggled. In fact, if you want Diego to. Diego Costa, Drogba. Anyway, those are two. Those okay. are the only two we, we, I can we, actually we, put yeah. my fingers on and say so these done. guys have done well. So the track record of strikers coming into Chelsea's team and actually hitting the ground running or doing well is very, very scarce. If you want to narrow it to a German player perspective, it's an even bigger disaster. Okay, we'll see how Chelsea will fare. I'm sure as a class player. Hold on. How, how many I'm years sure, ago? I'm sure, I'm sure people are reacting. We'll get to those things in a bit. 